You know, there's only one all-star snub that's worth making a video about, and that's Kyrie Irving. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. Not funny? Okay. Really, it's Devin Booker. We have nine first-time All-Stars, the most since 2010, and somehow Booker didn't get in? I was outraged. Twitter was outraged. Carl Anthony Towns said, it's a f***ing joke. Even Trey Young spoke up. D-Book should have gotten in. The fans, of course, agreed too. Until you asked, who gets bumped out? And for me, that's Russell Westbrook. Oh, then all of a sudden Twitter's mad about that. You're bugging, you want attention. This should be a criminal case. It's pretty serious, but it's true. This video is all about how big of a snub Devin Booker is and why Russell Westbrook should be out, and what it could mean for the future of the Phoenix Suns. Hey guys, I'm Casey Kiernan, host of the AM Hoops YouTube channel and over on the AM Hoops podcast. Go check it out. Brand new episode just dropped Friday morning. We come out with quality NBA videos Monday through Friday here on the YouTube channel. They all drop at 6 Eastern every day, Monday through Friday for free. All I ask is that you hit subscribe. Notification bells would be nice too. Also, hit me up on Twitter at Casey Kiernan and on Instagram at AM Hoops. All right, so this snub is historic. In fact, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal are the only guys the last 35 years to average over 27 points per game and not get selected as all-stars. Booker's not alone. So why don't we rank the snubs? Let's go number six, Zach Levine. Better statistically than, say, Kyle Lowry, who made the team. But of course, Levine on a losing Bulls team, so voters count that in. Number five, Carl Anthony Towns. His advanced stats are crazy, but Cats only played in 30 games. Number four, Paul George. Similar to Towns, very good numbers. He's missed a lot of games, but Paul George gets the edge here on Cat in the snubs list because he's on the second best team in the West. Number three, Bradley Beal. We just talked about the historic nature of his snub. Team success and defense matters unless you're Trey Young for some reason. The number two snub, Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics. A good team, good defense, good numbers, and he still didn't make it. You feel bad for Jalen Brown because basically people just didn't want the Celtics to have three players. That's not fair. And number one, Devin Booker. His GM, James Jones, a 14-year NBA vet, said, quote, I played with and against multiple all-stars in this league and Devin Booker is undoubtedly an NBA all-star. And to be clear, Devin Booker could still be an NBA all-star because one or two injuries and all of a sudden he could get in. We see that almost every year. Luka Doncic just had another ankle issue. So Book could still get to Chicago. But if he's a voting snub, that means someone should get bumped. And for me, that is clearly Russell Westbrook. Let's compare the numbers, shall we? Booker is better in points. Westbrook is better in assists. Westbrook is better in rebounds. Westbrook has a better team record. And I know, Westbrook has been on fire in January. Has he carried the Rockets, though, during James Harden's slump? Uh, yeah, to a 4-7 and seven record since Harden dipped. All right, so if record isn't that big of a factor between Westbrook and Booker here, how can I say that Booker is clearly ahead even though their traditional stats are similar? Because not all stats are created equal, folks. And of course, Mr. Triple Double Russell Westbrook is going to get points, rebounds, and assists. The box score will look great. It always does for him, but it hurts his team. And it has for years because he's inefficient. And why does that matter? I've got to explain it because people just don't get it. I mean, just look down below in the comments and you'll see that people do not get why efficiency matters. And in the explanation, I'm not gonna use a ton of graphs and complicated numbers. I'm just gonna use plain English. Anytime a player takes a shot or has a turnover, it takes a potential shot away from his teammates. The best players make the most out of the shots they take. So scoring 26 points per game while taking a lot of shots with a lot of turnovers hurts your team more than it helps. Russell Westbrook has the second most shots and the third most turnovers per game in the NBA. Yes, Westbrook carries a big workload for his team, and he has for years. 
but the best players now in an NBA history carry a big workload while being efficient. That's why these stats can lie to you. So which stats tell the truth? Well, look, here come the complicated numbers I talked about. Some advanced stats. True shooting percentage. Check Booker by a lot. Win shares, Booker. Player efficiency rating, Booker by just a little bit. Box score plus minus, Booker. But let's make it simple. Booker's got a better scoring average than Westbrook, and he's 15th in field goal attempts, while Westbrook is second. The Suns may lose more games, but it's not because of Booker's offense. In fact, if you compare him to the other bubble guys, like Donovan Mitchell, CP3, Brandon Ingram, Russell Westbrook, or John Morant, Booker ranks first or second in almost every advanced statistical category. Now, if you want to knock Devin Booker because of his defense, go right ahead. In fact, I'm with you on that. But some of these guys who made the All-Star game are not exactly all NBA defense. I'm not so sure Devin Booker ever makes an All-Star team. I mean, this year he had big numbers. He was efficient. Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson aren't in the picture and he still didn't make it. Let that sink in. So who's to blame? Mainly NBA coaches. Booker was eighth in fan voting. From the players, he was the fourth guard in the West and coaches picked the reserves and they didn't go with Devin Booker. I get it, never is a long time to say that a guy's not gonna make an all-star team, especially when he's as young, 23, and as talented as Devin Booker is. But at this rate, unless the city of Phoenix gets fed up and says we want the first Suns all-star since Steve Nash in 2012, I don't see it. I mean, like I said, this was the year, the perfect storm. So this leads us to another concern for the Suns and their fans. Look at this Booker snub tweet. Even this Rockets fan says, oh, this is Devin Booker in 2023 when he gets snubbed for the All-Star game, a fifth year in a row, averaging 32, six and six for the 10 seed Suns with a picture of Cleveland LeBron. You see where I'm going here, right? If winning is the biggest factor why Devin Booker got snubbed, does he have to leave Phoenix to win? I mean, I'm not so sure that the Suns are winning anytime soon. The West is getting more and more stacked every year. Their biggest opportunity to boost the future was that number one pick where they took DeAndre Ayton. No offense to Ayton, but that was the Luka Doncic draft. Devin Booker just signed a five-year rookie scale max extension in July of 2018. He's the Suns' highest paid player ever and under contract until 2024. So if he did eventually demand a trade, Suns are in a good spot. They would get a huge haul back. But don't rule it out because we have seen players demand trades in the past, especially recently. So maybe the pressure's on. That explains why the GM and their head coach spoke up. Monty Williams said, I've done a lot to promote our guy, and I wouldn't do it if I feel like he wasn't worthy of it. I'd be hard pressed to name another guard that's that much better than Devin, that's that efficient, and plays the way he plays, and means as much to our team and where we are as much as Devin. Now, to me, that's a lot more than just coach speak or some biased opinion. Monty Williams is right. Booker's other coach is right too. John Calipari from Kentucky told Book to use it as fuel. And at this point, making the playoffs is the only way that Devin Booker can prove his all-star doubters wrong. Bradley Beal agrees. It's disrespectful, but the real ones know, so I'm gonna just keep competing. I'm gonna try to get my team in the playoffs, for sure. A postseason run would be a huge slap back in the face of those who didn't vote Devin Booker. But the Suns have slowed down a lot since their hot start this year. So yeah, making the playoffs is a big ask in the West. But when the reserves were announced, the Suns were 20 and 27 without DeAndre Ayton for 25 games. That is impressive for a team that finished with just 19 wins all of last year. And a lot of that credit goes to the super talented, super efficient and unfairly snubbed Devin Booker. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a weekly NBA video.